I mean, for, for anything itself, like, you don't have anything without a designer. Mm. But everything that we get back to the original question, do we need more people who are... Because you need somebody to come up with an idea, and then you've got... I don't know, it normally takes loads of people to put the hard graph and the effort in, whether it's building it, or whether it's uh, mm-hmm. a building, or whether it's code, like uh, Google. You need normally you need a lot more people to do the practical parts of it, the mm-hmm. feasibility part of it, and you only need a few good ideas. Is it, I guess it's what I'm leaning towards. But that's that almost implies that. Okay, welcome to Real Talk, where we encourage people from different backgrounds to basically have a conversation, agree on things, disagree on things. Um, today, I'm joined with Johnny. You might have, he's going to be on a few of the videos, so you might have already uh, seen him before. And today's topic is going to be, do we need more creatives in the world? Right. Creative, Let, uh, creative uh, people, uh, creatives, uh, same thing. Yeah. yeah. So do we need less <laughs> creatives in the world? <laughs> so I'm just going to do it. For, for me, I work in teaching project management, so... In reality, my job, in my opinion, is not very creative. Um, Johnny? Uh, well, so I'm currently studying politics, which doesn't really sound very creative in itself, but I'm also a writer and a poet, and I, over the past few years I've been working inside the creative industry, kind of creative freelance, doing a bit of this and a bit of that. Um, so, of course, I've got some mm-hmm. opinions on this subject here. So, I'm going to jump in right at the deep end and say, Mm -hmm. right now, the world is probably probably lacking people studying sort of the hard sciences or the more sort of, um, yeah, the less creative areas. Mm -hmm. And that's really where the skill gap and shortage is. Um, And if universities or society would encourage more people to do that, uh, especially just to bring gender into this, especially within, you know, uh, a lot of men and uh, sort of go down the hard sciences and, and route and... STEM careers. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, um, and then there's there's uh, and there's more women who go down the, the creative side, if not all mm-hmm. women, of course. Um, and I do feel as if... even I do feel as if a lot more people would like to be in the creative industry in the world, but there's just not enough jobs right now uh, to allow that to happen, what do you think? Um, you touched on a few points there. Absolutely, more <laughs> more women in STEM careers. Uh, I would definitely get behind that. Um, but in in a sense, just to kind of even out the uh, imbalance of more men in STEM careers at the minute. Um, in terms of the creative industry, possibly, yeah, you could say that you have more women. Um, going into the creative uh, careers, but you could say that also for many disciplines. I mean, nursing, yep. for, for one thing, is a, is a STEM career and yet is, is majority True. women. Yeah. Uh, a lot of social sciences and humanities tend to actually be uh, predominantly it's women. Uh, I think I'm going too far into... The, the gender side of this, so I'll bring that to the <laughs> yeah, creative yeah. cre- We have another aspect. video on, on yeah. that, maybe. Yeah. I think so. Um, yeah, I think so. The interesting thing about the creative industry is that people don't actually realise how large it is. Mm. So the creative industry is actually brings in more money to this economy than um, all of STEM combined. Mm. Which so is I, I, I feel like that's that. wrong. I tell you why I tell you why that's wrong. So more than oil, more than um, weaponry, more than um, well, I was going to say music then, but that's part of the creative industry. Yeah, I, well, I think that's wrong because I guess what you're probably classing as creative is going to be like it could be like Tesla, or it could be like uh, it's these companies that are creating these new. These new products that are seen as very creative, let's say. However, how many people in that company are actually the creative geniuses behind it? Is it, what's his name, Steve Ives of, of Apple? Is it I? Who was at the design? Steve, Steve Jobs. The girl started. There was a, he had a design behind him though, right? It's like um, name. But I think. there's going to be like, in my mind, there's a small amount of creatives and they have the vision 
they have what where we can go, and then you have the more people who are, um, you know, the problem solvers who go in and go, okay, well, how can we actually build this to be, you know, let's say to fit the vision as such. But are you saying the problem solvers are not the creatives, or that they are the creatives? I guess that they are looking at how it's possible to do the creative thing. So the creative people tend to be the people who I guess are going to be a bit more blue sky thinking, like anything's possible. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in reality, you have to sort of take it back back down a step to say, okay, how yeah. can you do that? The difference between the, de- uh, the designer and the technician. Mm. Yeah. 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 I, no, I, I, I can fully see where you're coming from, mm-hmm. but um, say to take this away from specifically the creative industry and actually creativity itself, I think is a, a vital element of being human. Mm-hmm. You know, um, we were creators. The, di- the thing that divides us from other animals is that we create the world around yeah. ourselves. And you can't do that without thinking about the new ideas, uh, essentially. So the ability to think of new ideas. Mm. And let's say, because everybody, of course, can think of new ideas, but in general, you, creative people tend to think a little bit more outside of the box I guess I think that's absolutely what we need that's the problem solving aspect for me and in a lot of the jobs today though so if we're going to talk about what is creative like do we think um, you know influencers are creative I guess like people who do a lot of drawing a lot of writing that seem to be creative people Mm -hmm. would you extend how far do you extend it outside of those let's say, what we traditionally think is creative jobs. Um, and how far do you actually put that into the more traditional area, like, you know, engineering, like, mm. where, you know, the Facebook, Google, how much of, for example, for Google, how much of that is creative? Good question. Google, specifically, um, I mean, for, for anything itself, like, you don't have anything without a designer. Mm. But everything that we get back to the original question: Do we need more people who are? Because you need somebody to come up with an idea, and then you got. And then it, it normally takes loads of people to put the hard graph and the effort in, whether it's building it, or whether it's uh, mm-hmm. a building, or whether it's code like uh, Google. You need normally you need a lot more people to do the practical parts of it, the mm-hmm. feasibility part of it, and you only need a few good ideas. Is I guess it's what I lean towards. But that's, that almost implies that the creatives are only the idea people, that they don't do anything with the practical side. And I, I, that, that, I mean, yeah, people can do both, but normally people tend to have their head in one side more than the other side. And I guess the people who are very creative, I'd imagine, do a lot less of the technical stuff. Mm. And the people who are very technical probably do a lot less of the creative stuff. As a, as a general trend of, of, I guess, of what I've seen anyway. No, I can, I can um, probably agree with you to a degree on that. I've, I've worked in um, uh, an architecture planning surveying firm before, and the difference between, say, the architectural technicians and the architects themselves, the architects would, they are artists, they would have called themselves artists, whereas yeah. the technicians would call themselves an engineer. Right, yeah. Um, but I, think, I feel like the way that you're seeing it is the, it, it's kind of like in brain hemispheres. You know, you've got a creative hemisphere that is yeah. the left, and I think the right is logical, yeah. mathematical. Yeah. Um, I think for, for genuine, um, not, I don't want to say enlightenment, but to be our best selves as individuals mm-hmm. is actually a combination yeah. of both of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and maybe I've been a bit too polarised and saying, like, you know, you, you, you kind of one or the other, because of course everybody's going to be a bit of a blend. And it's just how much mm. do you go down that path? Well, see, there tends to be dichotomous thinking in, in the sense everything either is or isn't, is one or the other. It's it's black and white or thinking. Right, black and white thinking, yeah. yeah. Whereas um, having studied social sciences and being an artist myself, I've more or less seen the blurred line. And that's where I look at I see the interrelation, the mm. interdisciplinary between everything. Um, as opposed to this is creative, this is logical. I can mm. see the the beauty. Mm. Okay, do you think in society right now we should be encouraging more than I like? I guess there's three three look there's uh, three areas why right, where people could be should we be encouraging people to be more creative, to be more um, to be more of a blend in the middle, 
or, or basically be more of a, a problem solver or more um, thinking in a mm. yeah I forgot what word I was going to use logical logical that was logical, it yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, hmm like if you was put in charge right now which of those three areas would you want more spending to go towards? Would I want Fahima to stay a ballerina or go into cyber? <laughs> um, I see, so it's difficult with the current global climate, uh, let's say, is it Russia, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's quite a big... To anybody who's very heavily creative, no. I feel like that... To say like, oh, we need to spend more money on arts and stuff like that. I feel like this is literally just for an expanded work. So it's like, oh, wait a minute. As we see, I guess, with Germany, who I think tripled their military spending or something like this. Um, where like, oh, if you're spending a lot of money on creative stuff, then you're, you're, you're opening yourself up to sort of threats from other people. Yeah, which I think uh, might actually be the reason why there's been a diminishing on funding in the creative sector um, over the past few years. It kind of in preparation for that. And... Yeah, the, the the belief would be you can't fight a war with painters. I mean, it'd be very difficult to be Putin with that. But you've got to think about all the different aspects of war itself as well. And art is a message. Art is supposed to be something that says something. Um, and there is different levels to war. So even if you could get a message across... Think, but what, okay, what if the other, like, in, in that scenario there, do you think... If you have it with creative forms to communicate to Putin, he mm. would be less likely to invade other countries. So it wouldn't be Putin you want to. Cool. And we're back again after the a battery dying. So <laughs> I think what are we up to? To, to not like I don't know if we're gonna tread over the same line, but basically we're saying like how can creative pe how can should we spend more money on being creative or why do I keep forgetting the word? Creative and what's the opposite? Well, not the opposite, but... Logical. Lo- logical, yeah. I don't know why I keep forgetting that. Um, and we were saying about, yeah, with Putin, and you, how would you address that problem? In terms of careers, should we put more money into funding STEM careers and encouraging the next generation to, yeah. to learn engineering and science and all that? Or, or do we want more creatives? Um, and it, it, like in this, today's current age, is a very... It's a, I was about to say it's a very, um, it's a potentially a very dangerous world, but it's actually one of the safest times we've ever lived in. Yeah. But even then, you still have to be focusing on being the best, having all these, you know, technical advancements. And and if we're going to say that, you know, if you spend more money on STEM, you're going to be mm. a more military advanced country, um, then that kind of means you have to spend less money on creative thinking. Mm. And I think you would. Tr- alluding to a point where there might be a different way <laughs> that you can go about <laughs> stopping war other than well, having nuclear deterrence or bombs and such. So the, there is ab- an absolute importance in, in STEM careers. It's kind of what, what keeps the technological world revolving and uh, in terms of military power as well, if we definitely need it, being a small country as we are, uh, the technology is, is, a, is, is a massive thing, especially during... Uh, pertaining to hybrid warfare. Uh, I will also say though that there is different aspects of um, of, of war and of life and maintaining power um, and uh, benefiting your economy using creative uh, spaces. Um, so would you spend more money on? I would not spend more <laughs> money. I would definitely keep it keep going because you you need designers still. Mm-hmm. Um, so you think the spending right now is about the right amount of spending, or would you increase spending in terms of the creative industry? I mean, as a creative, definitely give some more money this way. Um, I know a lot of people that could do with that. Um, at the same time, we, I mean, we, we can be coming up with creative solutions to solve problems that we have. Mm-hmm. But can you also do that through the STEM industry yeah and Probably. you almost do not want the creatives to be in the, the STEM industry like in order to like you know, certain point. jobs like you know I guess uh, no offense but being a poet or like um, 
being a model or Instagram influencer, that like you know, the seen as creative jobs mm -hmm. that they sit outside of the STEM industry. Yes. So is it yeah. I guess is it a case of and if you put more money into the STEM industry, could you not just encourage more of those creative people with those types of creative to mindsets to, to go into that industry and that would make it better? I see what you're saying there, but I think the problem that we've got at the minute with that is um, a lot of the times, art, the, a lot of the arts are seen as a hobby. People are seen as hobbyists. Mm -hmm. Whereas, yeah. like, you know, there's people making full time careers out of this. Yeah. And then, so really, the expectation is for someone to balance two careers. Do you, do you not think it is, it could easily be seen as more of a hobby? Like, a lot of people would, you know, can, I guess, I'm not saying they could write well, but they could write poetry as a hobby. Mm. But a lot of people wouldn't be able to, you know, go to the STEM industry as a hobby. Like, one of them is definitely could be a hobby, yeah. and one of them can't be. So that's, that, I guess that's why there's always going to be that perception of that. There's, there's a lot more learning that needs to be done for one than the other. Mm -hmm. um, and One of them you're almost born with. Yeah, well, see... In my I, mind, anyway. Yeah, I actually, I think I will definitely agree with you on that. With um, I don't feel creativity can be taught. I think it can only be encouraged. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, some people have a creative spark to begin, and it can be, if it's encouraged and supported, it can really turn into something. I feel everyone has that creative spark within them. And but if you're less creative than somebody else, is there any point in you being in that industry because there's somebody else in effect who could maybe be doing it better than you? Well, see, as an aspect of our humanity, to actually call it an industry, for it to be an industry in itself, kind of like diminishes what it is. And in fact, like, say, how good for your mental health mm -hmm. is yeah. the different forms of art, you know? Uh, yeah. You might not do painting as a hobby, you might do it as a, a mindfulness thing. Mm -hmm. And the benefits of that are unfounded. But this is it, I think a lot of people would love to do more creative stuff. Yeah, I no, think there's I a lot of people, because everybody does have an element to both. It's just as a society, unfortunately, I feel like if you encourage people to spend more time in the more technical industries, it seems to advance us more, but yeah, at the cost of, you know, your mental health, potentially, like a lot of, uh, uh, from what I've heard and read about, like a lot of, you know, the mental health issues are to do with people doing something they don't enjoy. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I would probably put that myself in that category where, you know, I teach project management. I don't think it was a calling in life. I don't think there's a, there's no, there are areas that I enjoy more than other areas of project management, uh, but in general, it's, a, it's an area that you know a lot of people would not want to be doing. Whereas, like if you're talking about the more creative areas, a lot of people would love to do be doing more in the creative areas. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's like, like making that a podcast or something, or oh, a YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this gives me an out, a part-time yeah, outlet well, in order to do stuff like because I would do this, I would do this at work, to be honest, just mm -hmm. in casual conversations in a coffee shop. But this gives it another outlet to do that, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, being creative, making something is so fulfilling mm -hmm. because I feel like as creators, yeah, we are supposed to do that. We're mm -hmm. supposed to, and and we can see a piece of ourselves of our essence within the things that we make. Mm -hmm. Whereas it's it's hard to do that. It's not as tangible, like in a yeah, project. Yeah. You know, in, a, in, a, in in the creative industry, you you could start the idea and almost finish the idea, and you get that tangible, um, bent, but you get that sense of satisfaction. Whereas yeah. Yeah. normally in the more uh, let's say technical or STEM industries, mm -hmm. you're just a part. You're one part of a cog. In the machine, and, and there's like thousands of cogs, and whatever you do doesn't feel that sort of bad. You're, alien, you are alienated from what you produce mm -hmm. because what you produce has no more effect on you anymore. It's gone. Okay. That's it. It's yeah. behind you now. Yeah. Maybe you can look on it as a past achievement, but you can't actually grasp it. Mm -hmm. You know. So let's go to I guess to finish this off. So the original point was: Do we need less creative people? Or should there be less creative people? There should... People need to realise the importance of creativity. Mm -hmm. 
I think, and we each need to realise our potential as creators. Whether you go into that as a career or not, I think you need to understand that you can do it. Um, it doesn't have to be for a purpose. Still, you know, it doesn't have to be to make money. Like, if it fulfills you, if it makes you happy, then yeah, it's a positive thing, you know, it benefits you. And, and heck, if you've got a STEM career, if you were in a STEM career or you're going to war, maybe pick up a paintbrush as well or write a poem about it. <laughs> And maybe it'll just make that a little bit easier for you, you know? Yeah, so I, I agree everybody should be... Well, I think everybody should... It's, it's always a confidence. Everybody should be have the ability to pursue the creative side of things that they want to do. Mm. Um, I think society as a whole will benefit from more people doing it. You know, I do think that like yeah, it's an unfortunate situation, but right now this is not enough job for everybody to be a full-time creative. Mm -hmm. which I think is unfortunate, um, but it doesn't, I, I think most people in, in my life or in the Western world do have enough spare time to be able to do a bit of both, where they can pursue a job that makes them mm -hmm. uh, a decent salary and they can do the creative things on the side. Um, Stop watching Netflix. Yeah, which is like the least creative <laughs> thing that you probably can do. I made, I made a conscious effort to... Uh, use more of my time to do things mm -hmm. that I've uh, improved, I've improved me one way which could be financially unfortunately or something that I enjoy and that's what I've one of the reasons why you improve yourself better doing, yourself yeah. yeah and that's one of the reasons why I started to do you know a YouTube channel yeah. this is I, I think I started back two years ago and then I moved house I didn't have much time and that's a good point actually as soon as I had less time I stopped to doing the creative stuff and I started doing stuff that brings in the money. Yeah. And even now that I've got more time, I could do the other way around, I feel like. Even though this might have fulfilled you more and made you more happy and actually better. Yeah, maybe. Or, maybe. I mean, yeah, this is it. I'm worried about the future, about how am I going to retire with no money, you yeah. know? Or, you know, so, yeah. I, I did prioritise something that I enjoyed less mm -hmm. because of money which could be bad or good, I guess. We, we, uh, everyone does this, especially when we get, we're not in the habit of doing it or we get out of the habit of doing it. We forget how much benefit we actually get from doing these, these things that we love, creating things. Um, and we think, oh, I just, I just want to sit down. I'm tired. I just want to vegetate a bit. I want to melt in front of my TV yeah. screen. Yeah, but people are never happy when you're like vegetated, like no, you're not. Yeah, like you might be for a little bit, but like you just stimulate. You could if you do that too much, it becomes so boring. Mental like, masturbation. You, you won't enjoy that over over time. I've I've done that a lot too much in my life. It's so. a brain wank. That's all it is. It's a brain wank. <laughs> it's a little bit of excitement and stimulation for your nervous system, whereas to actually pour yourself onto the page and see that turn into an essence of yourself that you can see yourself reflectively. There's nothing like it. Cool. Well, we'll leave it there then. I think that's um, about half an hour. Thanks for your time, Johnny. Um, how can people get in contact with you? Um, if anyone wants to speak to me after watching this, if you like what I said, if you disagree and you want to argue, um, or even just check out some of my work, uh, you'll find me at Just Johnny Things on Instagram. That's Johnny without H, or just look up Johnny Cosmo. Cool. That's a wrap.